Hey everybody, what's up? Jeffrey Way here with NetTouch. So today we're going to be uh, doing something kind of cool. We're going to be playing around with Canvas and I'm going to show you how to create background noise with uh, the Canvas element. So it's kind of a, a cool idea to keep from using images. Uh, is it 100% practical? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we can talk in the comments, but it's, it's, some, it's a cool way to kind of experiment with some of these new techniques and uh, see what you can do with it. So let's dig in. Uh, Here's what we're going to be, be building. So it's super simple. We're just adding uh, image noise. So this is very common for you know your background, and you'll just have a little bit of noise. A uh, funny little anecdote is when I was on Twitter and I was talking about this, people thought I was referring to audio. And I was like, it would be great if we could create uh, noise with CSS, is what I said. And a lot of people were thinking that I was referring to like uh, <laughs> you know add music to your website with CSS, which doesn't make much sense. Anyways. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to give credit to where I kind of discovered this idea from. It looks like he's working on his website right now, but his name's Mitch Johnson. So this is where I learned this technique, so be sure to check out his website. Okay, so as always, we start out with a blank canvas. So I'm going to create my new HTML5 uh, wrapper, and we'll just give this name of noise. So all we're doing here is we're going to create noise with the canvas element and we're going to apply it to the body element and that's really all we're doing here so uh, just for convenience let's place this within all in one page now the first thing is how are we going to do this I want to create a function and we'll get this function name uh, generate noise okay and I want the noise to accept a parameter, and this is going to be the opacity. So it's how uh, how vivid we want the, the noise to be. So usually you'll set it to like 0.1 or 0.2. So we're going to set this to opacity. Okay, so next is the very first thing I need to do is check to see whether the browser supports Canvas. If it supports Canvas, I can create the noise. Otherwise, uh, we're going to see a solid color or something like that. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll say if, and we'll say document, create element, and we're going to create canvas, and we're going to call it get context. Now, if this returns value, uh, that means the browser supports canvas. So don't let these three exclamation points confuse you. First, uh, one will negate will ne negate the value. So uh, if we have two, that's different. That's going to convert it to a Boolean. So let's say the value of uh, some value is um, hello world, right? Well, that's not empty. So when you would prefix that value with the double negative, that'll convert it to a Boolean. And because it's not empty, that would be true. So that would convert hello world into true. Or if it was a space, it was blank, uh, that would convert it to false because blank is false, right? So here, all we're doing is we're going create element, canvas, get context, and then we're converting that to a Boolean. So if the browser supports it, that'll be true. But I'm I'm negating this, so I'm pretty pretty much saying if the browser does not support uh, canvas, then uh, let's just return false. And we could put this all in one line, but let's be proper and put it within curly braces. Okay, so if the browser does not support Canvas, return false, because we don't want to bother doing any work if we don't have to. All right, next, let's create our variables. So var canvas and create element. And you know what, we could probably combine this creation with the one above, but no worries. Uh, the next one is ctx, and this is going to be the context. So you can name this however you want, canvas.getContext, and we're going to pass in 2D. Okay, uh, what else? We're gonna build, we need to have a X value and a Y value for where the canvas is, because we're not gonna build some enormous canvas that would uh, be too time consuming. So we're gonna build little squares, and then we're going to repeat those squares throughout the whole screen. So we need to create uh, an X variable and a Y variable. And then also, we're going to be creating the noise. So we create the noise with RGB, red, green, blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare those up here as well, RGB. And then finally, the opacity. Uh, I'm not going to make the opacity parameter required. So if they just call generate noise, we want to set a default. And an easy way to do that is take that argument opacity and you make it equal to either itself or if it's undefined, it's going to be equal to a default value. So it's equal to 0.2. So opacity is equal to whatever the user passes in or if they didn't pass anything, this is undefined, in which case we set opacity equal to 
0.2. So this is or, so this pretty much means if this is not true, then run this. So if this is undefined, that's false, in which case only in that condition will this side be uh, set to opacity. All right, so there's our variables. So now uh, let's declare a couple things. First, the canvas. Uh, we got to set a width of it because we're not actually creating a, a mark. We're not using markup. We're just creating this all dynamically. So canvas, and we're going to set this. Uh, you can play around with this. You want to be careful because if if you do something like 500, it's really going to put some strain on the load times. But at the same time, if you set it to like 10, the problem is it makes the canvas so small uh, to the point where it repeats, and you can really see that it's a uh, that it's an image being repeated. So play around with it. Uh, I believe um, the guy I learned this technique from, I've already lost it, Mitch, he did about 100. I think I went about halfway to around 55, but you can play around with that a, a bit. And then next, canvas, also set the height, and we're gonna set this, it's a perfect square, so 55 by 55. Okay, so the next step is we need to filter through these. So I'm gonna do four. And we're going to go for x. So we've already declared the x variable, so we don't need to do it again. So for x equals 0, and x is less than uh, the, canvas's, the canvas width, which is 55, then x plus plus. So what are we going to do in here? So we're, we're filtering through it. So I'm going to immediately do another for statement for the y. That way we can do as many as uh, we need to. So this will make more sense shortly. For y equals 0, and y is less than canvas.hide y plus plus. So now this is going to run 55 times 55 times. So I want to check this out. How many times this is going to run? 55 times 55. It's going to run 3,000 times, but it's going to do it really fast, really, really fast. Within this second for statement, we need to declare our RGB value. So you know to create noise, uh, you can create any kind of noise just by uh, using RGB and passing in a random value. And you're just going to create a bunch of different colors. That's all noise is. But then when you set the opacity down really low, it doesn't matter specifically what those colors are because it'll just come across as um, gray or shades of gray. So here we're going to say R equals math dot floor, and then we're going to do math dot random times 255, and you know in RGB uh, there's 255, 255 uh, color values, sort of. Uh, so what, what will this do? Well, math dot random will generate uh, a value between 0 and 1, right? So let's say 0.5. So at that point, 0 0.5 times 255, so let's do this together, and you know that's going to be equal to half of 255. So 255 times 0 0.5 is 127.5. And then what math.floor does is it, it brings it down. So that would bring 127.5 down to 127. So at this point, assuming the random number was uh, 0.5, R would be set to 127. So all we're doing here is we're setting up our values so we can eventually do RGB 127 blah, 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 okay? So we just need to do this for each one. So what I'm going to do up here now is, because it's pretty much the same, I'm going to repeat this, and this is going to be G, and this will be B. And those will be the same. So each time, that'll be an entirely different value, and you'll end up with uh, something unique uh, each time in this for statement. Okay, so next, what do we do need to do next? Um, we'll do the context, and I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. Context.fill style, and this is where we fill it. So we're going to set the background color. This is pretty much all we're doing, setting a background color. And this is going to be equal to RGB A. And the first one is going to be R. And then we need to separate each with commas, G, B. And then the fourth parameter with RGBA is alpha. And we know that we have the opacity argument. And remember, if one's not passed in, it'll be set to 0.2. So let's say uh, when this runs, uh, let's do this together. Let's say it comes out to red is 125, green is 50, blue is 200, and they didn't pass an alpha, so we set it to the default 0.2. That's all we're doing right here. We're just setting up the commas for each one and then using these variables to add the values. And then we're filling the, the, the canvas. We're setting the background. All right, so we're done there. I'm going to delete that. 
And then the only other thing we need to do now is specify what we're filling. And we're doing a rectangle here. So the context dot fill rectangle. And the fill rectangle is going to accept four parameters, uh, the x, where it should be on the x-axis, the y-axis, and then the width and the height. So we already have created the x and the y. So we have that. And then we just need to do one and one, because we're just doing one pixel by one pixel. So hopefully this is beginning to make sense. We're running through this square, and we're doing it for the entire area, which was like 3,000 something. And then for each one, we're creating that one pixel noise. And it's going to be a different value each time. It's going to be a different little color. And then we create that rectangle, and it's a one pixel by one pixel, and its uh, position is going to be different each time. So the first time, it'll be 0, 0, and then it'll be uh, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and then it'll just fill up that entire area. But this is going to go really fast, uh, way, you know, fractions of a second. So really, that's all the function that we need to worry about. So the next step at this point is come here and we will do document dot body dot style dot background image. So how do we turn this canvas into an actual image that we can apply to our background? And there's an option that will uh, take canvas and it'll it'll convert to a data URL and you can use that within your style sheets. It's something not many people are doing yet because uh, it's kind of complicated. You end up with these huge strings of text that I'll show you. But it is possible and it's a way to uh, use images without, without actually using images. So equals URL and we got to add canvas dot and here's how you convert it to an image to data URL and that's going to generate a unique string uh, that'll reproduce that image and I need to specify what what type of image uh, let's do a pink and then close that out and I think that should do it so all we're doing here is just with CSS setting our background image and setting its URL and the URL is going to be equal to this string okay and you're going to see it's just this enormous string and then we're just closing out the print the parens right there so now we've created our function. The final step here is to call the function, generate noise. And like I said, we can pass in a value. So let's pass in 0.2, but that's the default value. So let's do 0.1. So if we did everything right, we should get some noise. So I'm gonna run this in Firefox. Okay, and let's see, we're getting a black, so it must be a mistake. Let's go back. Give me just a second. There's one RGB, forgot to close that out. Like so. So let's create that, create that closing paren. R G. Yep. R G R. That should be R G B. So I think that should do it. So now if we refresh the page. There we go. So we're getting very subtle noise. So to give you an idea, if we do it full on, what you're going to see is all of these colors because we're creating random colors each time. So if I zoom in, can you see there how for every single pixel it's a different color? And that's because we created it right here. We took a random color value and we created a one pixel by one pixel square and we set that so each time this runs we position the x and the y coordinates off by one and that's how for the entire square it looks like that but when you set the opacity down you get rid of that color and then you end up with like the default just very nice so if you look here can you see how if you look very closely, you can kind of see where it repeats, and it's going to be different every time. So sometimes you may not be able to tell. So that's why you need to figure out exactly what you feel comfortable with as far as the width and the height. But just remember, the, the wider and the higher, the more times that this is going to have to run. But if I click it again, it's a little bit harder to see. So do your own work and figure out what you feel comfortable with. But if I zoom out, I think that looks just fine, especially when you want to bring it down to the noise of like 0.1. There you go. So this is what's cool about this is there's no images involved. So what you can do now, <coughs> and you could do this with a 24-bit ping, but you can do something like um, background red. You can change the background colors, and it doesn't matter. It's still going to receive that same level of noise because it doesn't matter. Uh, then you can even do cooler things where uh, you could use maybe if you had some kind of cool background animation where it went from, from red to green to yellow. It wouldn't matter whether there was noise because you're just using background colors. So to give you a quick idea, let's, 
just have some quick fun CSS stuff here. Um, let's do this. We will do body, and we're going to set a background color by default of white. And let's create a, an animation. So this will only be WebKit, just to give you an idea. WebKit animation. And the name, this can be anything you want to call it. Let's call it fade, because we're going to fade background colors with the CSS only. And then we'll do the, the duration. So WebKit animation duration. This is how long will it take for this animation to complete, I don't know, something arbitrary, four seconds. And then finally, animation. Iteration count. So these sound scary, but they're not. How many times do you want this to repeat? So if you set it one, it's going to run exactly one time. If you set it ten, that animation is going to finish and repeat ten times. Here, let's just do it once. All right. So how do we create our animation? You do at at sign dash webkit dash keyframes, and then the name that you gave it. In this case, we called it fade. So like so. And now you can either set from and to. That's kind of what WebKit did uh, even with their gradients, even though the W3 recommended uh, Mozilla's form of gradients, which is a little bit easier. Anyhow, so you could do from and to, or you can pass percentages. So you could say it's 0%. This is the styling that I want here. And at 0%, we want background to be, I don't know, red. We're just, you know, this is just for the example. And then at 33%, we want the background to be green. And then at 66%, we want our background to be blue. And then finally, when we get to 100%, let's set the background to our base background color, which is white. And that's our keyframes. So pretty neat. I kind of like the idea of uh, a keyframes, kind of a flash-like feature. So let's try this out. Now keep in mind, this is, uh, this is WebKit. So let's try it out fresh. And we're not getting anything, which means there was a mistake. So let's fix that really quickly. And I'm thinking it might be those that extra T. So let's try it again. Oh, and also that comma. Sorry, that's the JavaScript world coming back to me. There we go. And there you go. You got background transitions, and it's using the noise, so you're not having to worry about any images if you're using a, maybe a JPEG or an 8-bit ping as your background. You can just do it. So if you want to set the iteration count to 3, and we want each uh, color to be, we'll set that a 7 seconds total, red to green to blue and then back to our white color so you could probably figure out some cool things and by the way because we set the iteration count to four it's going to repeat that again total number of four times and then if you want you can always make the noise more apparent but it's going to get less nice looking every time so you want to keep your your background noise one two maybe let's check three yeah even that's too much for my taste i like point one Anyways, uh, so, that, so that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you make your background color fade from red to green, but you get the idea and you can do some cool stuff. So I want to know from you is what do you think of this technique? Uh, is it easier just to use a ping? Maybe it is. You know, you can you can create a 24-bit ping of noise. That's 10 pixel by 10 pixel that takes up next to no space, and it'll work in every, every browser that supports... Um, alpha transparency. But it's a, it's a cool way to play around with Canvas and see what you can do. And I'd love to see uh, what else you can come up with. So we can talk more in the comments and I'll see you later. Bye.